Yo, I'm Bob. Totally blind since birth into Star Wars, talking about Season 2, Episode 2 of The Bad Batch on Disney+. Plus. This one's Ruins of War, 18th episode of the show overall. Spoilers ahead. Watch the episode before listening to my thoughts. Jumping right in, and you were warned. So lots of falling as the episode begins, picking up right where the last one left off. But luckily, the thrusters of the container, they fire off. So no messy crash landing for tech Echo and Omega. Well, if these three died, we really wouldn't have much of a Bad Batch TV show to watch. So they made it out. Um, I, I don't want to say unscathed because poor Tex, uh, his femur has been fractured. And he actually makes a note of how much pressure had been applied to, to fracture that femur there. So you've got these three. They meet a new ally in Romar Adele, I think his name is. And he's voiced by Hector Alizondo. Hector did some work in the DC animated universe. I think he voiced one of the Hawkmen in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. I think it was, um, what was his name? Krager, Craig, Krager, Krager his name was. And uh, one of my favorite lines of Krager was, my head doesn't work so good. I'll always go back to that line. It makes me chuckle for some reason. Um, he also did Bane in Mystery of the Batwoman. So I love it when uh, vocally my fandoms kind of kind of cross over every once in a while. And cool that he's voicing a good guy here. He's this survivor of the bombarded city and he takes everybody to his little shelter out in the middle of nowhere. He says he's uh, living and working with other survivors. I, I guess he's probably not living with them. We don't see him at his domicile, but I'm sure they're around. And uh, I like the scenes relating to Romar here. I kind of hope we see him again. He's an interesting character. So he's trying to restore this data core and it's got Serenian culture. It's got, uh, art, history, music, things like that on there. And Tech, of course, gets it up and running for him. And he just lets out this joyous laugh whenever this gets uh, back up and running. And I like how he lets Clone Force 99 know that, oh, well, you thought Dooku pillaged and wrecked other worlds. He stole from us, too. That's why the city was ultimately bombarded. Uh, he lets them know, you know, I don't want anything to do with Dooku's war chest. You're, you can keep it, do whatever you want with it. I don't want any part of it. I think it's cursed. And uh, Omega, of course, she's bent on getting back to the container. She feels responsible for Clone Force 99 uh, being in the situation that they're in. She's blaming herself because of the conversation she overheard in the last episode. And I also love how Romar gives her this toy at, at one point in the episode. You know, she's she's bent on getting treasure and he throws her this kaleidoscope and she's like, oh, oh, cool. Are there jewels in this thing? And he's like, no, nah, it's a toy. You you play with it. Um, you know, it, it, it'll make you happier than any treasure ever could. And um, she still needs to, in her own mind, you know, get back to the to the container and accumulate as much wealth as she can. She wants to, she wants to make up for what she thinks she's done wrong. And uh, it, it's not out of a sense of greed, but of course money uh, gets people in trouble and that's what she's headed for. She, she sneaks away and back to, uh, back to that container there. But of course they, they know she's gone. Meanwhile, you've got Wrecker and Hunter and they're trying to make it through the bombarded city. They, they make it out of Castle Sereno. They're trying to get to the Havoc Marauder, but on, on the way they have to deal with uh, Captain Wilco and his clone squads. I love how they, they commandeer the, the cannon from the, the old armored assault tanks. I say old, but this is 19 years before the Battle of Yavin. I would say, you know, maybe four or five months after Revenge of the Sith, so not that old. And I like how they use their ingenuity and they, they crash that one V-Wing with, uh, with the tanks cannon there. You know how in the last video discussion where I said that uh, they're just using stun bolts? Well, I guess one clone pilot bit the dust because that one V-Wing, uh, well, it crashed. And then later on, uh, down goes a gunship. I think a couple of speeder bikes uh, get dusted there. So, I mean, Clone Force 99 they do want to try and preserve their brethren as much as they can, but they will kill when they have to. So, I mean, you've got uh, everybody eventually meeting up with everybody else. Um, and 
luckily Romar, he he survives. We might see him again. We might not. Uh, I like how we get to see Republic gunship showing up. I like the addition of that E-Web cannon there toward the end of the episode. I, I guess I have an eye, so to speak, for vehicles and vessels that show up in Star Wars. Really cool looking uh, artillery pieces and you know weapons of war. I love that stuff about Star Wars. So we get to see a lot of that in action in this episode. Um, and of course, everybody, they, they make it off of Sereno, of course, with no... No credits at all. Echo has to to tell Omega, you need to let it go. Uh, it's all right. We, we'll make it. Just just let the money drop. And, uh, you know, that container does eventually go over. And uh, when they get back on the Havoc Marauder, they, they make it out. Um, he lets her know, hey, you know, if it had been for you, if you hadn't come along, we'd probably be fighting for the Empire so yeah, I'd do it all again if I had to. You know, he, he lets her know just how important she is, and uh, how she has changed their lives for the better. Um, I, I don't think he cares what the situation's like. Um, he's just happy to have her there, and I like how he's been talking about doing more than just running and hiding and, and living hand to mouth. He wants to fight the Empire, and he's brought that up more than once uh, in these last two episodes. So maybe we'll see more of that as the season progresses. Of course, you've got, I think, I think it's probably my favorite scene at the end of the episode. Poor Captain Wilco. He's already written this report. Uh, he has confirmed sightings of Clone Force 99. You've got Admiral Rampart showing up. And I love how Nashir, uh, voice actor who portrays this, uh, this Admiral vocally, I love how he's, he's going about um, the Admiral's performance here. I mean, he is telling this clone, look... Um, you're going to need to write a new report. I don't want to be put at risk. I'm trying to, to save my own bacon here. If Tarkin finds out that they're alive, I could be in big trouble. So yeah, you're going to need to rewrite that report. And this loyal clone, I love how he's like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not rewriting this report. I'm not falsifying anything. And yeah, that, that's it for poor Captain Wilco. We're not going to see him again. We have Rami here. He shoots him. And down he goes. So it's going to be an interesting season for this guy. I, I have a feeling he's going to be digging himself into a deeper and deeper and deeper hole. I mean, it's it's Governor Tarkin, dude. Uh, he's probably going to find out what you've done. The captain has survived the battle. His his clones are going to probably start asking where he is. I, I don't I don't know how long Rami's gonna last here. I don't really want to see him redeemed. I kind of want to see him get his just desserts uh, at some point uh, in the Bad Batch. But yeah, this guy he is you know the typical Imperial out for himself, uh, out for his own well-being, out for power, <laughs> out to save his own butt. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him. So I guess that'll do for this uh, episode discussion. I really enjoyed the action scenes in this episode. Really cool to see a lot of Clone Wars era weaponry actually being used to fight against Clone Force 99. That was uh, some of my favorite uh, bits from the episode. So next time we're going to be talking about the solitary clone. As of this video's filming, the episode hasn't aired, so I don't know what to expect. Hopefully Cody is going to show up. We do know he's going to be appearing at some point in the season. Um, I'm hoping to see more of Tarkin, possibly the Feline showing up, as I mentioned in the last episode discussion. Uh, who knows? I, I really want to see more of the, the criminal underworld in the Bad Batch. Uh, we saw Bib in season one. Maybe we'll see more of what Jabba's got going on in between the prequel and the original trilogy. Anything goes in this show, I think. Hopefully we'll eventually get to see uh, when some of the Imperial ships uh, came into being, too. Anywho, till next time, guys. May the Force be with you, and hear you then.